Are you sick of maneuvering around the battlefield, gaining that perfect edge on the enemy, landing those clean and lethal first shots only to have that Cheetos finger, Mountain Dew chugging, basement dwelling, Black Ops aim assist controller sweat, do a 360 so fast it breaks your eyeballs, lock onto your face, and send you to your maker before you even realize what happened? Are you sick of being called a boomer and a casual because you think map knowledge, real world tactics, and a low TTK require more skill than drinking G Fuel as your primary source of hydration and breaking movement mechanics to achieve that crackhead movement perk? If you said yes to any of those things, then this is the right video for you. I'm going to tell you why the tier one playlist is one of the absolute best playlists in Modern Warfare 2 with the exception of one or two game modes within that playlist. Yeah! Oh, but before we get started, wait, that was my metal vocal. Don't let it scare you, okay? But before we get started, please consider to smash that like button if you enjoy this type of content, and please consider subscribing to become a part of our YouTube community. I would love to have you as part of my extended family, and it would mean the world to Miss Riot and I. Shout out to Miss Riot for supporting myself and supporting the community with all she does to include helping me edit these videos. So if you like world class A plus hype, world class B plus entertainment, C minus gameplay, and a lot of heavy metal and rock and roll, then stay for this video. This is the right place for you. Let's jump into it. All right, so this is my tier one review of, well, the tier one playlist. And the video title says it's a brutally honest look at it. And yes, while my opening statements were in jest with a little heavy metal sprinkled in, there's a grain of truth in them as well. Comedians will often tell you that their best content contains grains of truth. And that's what makes it so funny. And while the divide between the modern warfare community is kind of funny at times, there's definitely some brutal truths to be had on both sides. I'm going to tell you why I think tier one is the best playlist. And I'm going to tell you kind of where I'm coming from. Of course, everything I say in this video is my opinion. So take it as such, right? All right. I think it goes without saying, but you never know in the comments. All right. So I'm going to go off script a little here. And I just want to tell you my thoughts on tier one and where I come from. So I'm a huge fan of Arma, Insurgency Sandstorm, um, freaking Escape from Tarkov. I grew up on the old SOCOM games. Well, the old SOCOM games were very arcadey as far as some movement mechanics go and the way you could do things. They were very hardcore in the sense of one bullet would kill you. It required a ton of communication with your team and a lot of tactics to figure out how you're going to plant the bomb or rescue the hostages. And I think those type of games are so fun and so immersive. And I would argue that the skill gap required to achieve um, a higher skill level in those games it is much larger than the skill gap required to um, play games like Apex Legends, right? Or play the old Call of Duties that, you know, people hype up to be like these amazing things that were like just, you know, catered towards the hardcore player base. Okay, like whatever. Um, I would argue that there's more skill involved in low TTK games. So what I like about the tier one playlist is it is, it's a one shot, one kill. It's awesome. You can actually rush an objective with a 30 round magazine. I rushed up to B on the hotel map and I took out three guys because one, I got there first and I pulled off my shots quicker than them. And I was positioned in an advantageous way as they were approaching the objective. Bam, bam, bam. Three guys called in a UAV right off the bat with hardline equipped, right? So that felt so good. It doesn't tell you in tier one when you get kills. So you have to really rely on um, what's going on and have that situational awareness. If you have three or four guys rushing you, how many guys you took out. So we were playing on embassy. Three guys were rushing the hall. I took them out and I, I could see only two bodies. And so then I saw like this dude's like leg hanging out from the bathroom. Like, oh, okay, we took him out. Now I can push this hallway. It's clear for me to push up and then work my way to the next objective. But to me, that's so cool and that's so immersive. It's so brutal. It doesn't, there's no kill cam in tier one. And I think tier one, what I have noticed with the exception of team deathmatch, team deathmatch is pretty much cancer on all playlists, but specifically, <laughs> let me get back to my normal voice here. Specifically, it's cancer on tier one because you literally, someone will be sitting there with a mine or a claymore, literally sitting, not even say laying down, I should say, on stairs, just waiting for people to come in. And like I said, it is way more cancerous to play team deathmatch on tier one. So I will say with the exception of that game mode, tier one is leaps and bounds above any of the other game modes in multiplayer. Now, unless you want to play Invasion, right, or Ground War, those are those are two separate game modes that you really can't compare, I don't think, to Tier 1. But that's uh, that's my thought on that. 
while playing tier one, when you have a good team that's communicating, it is so, so fun. And you're going to almost dominate every match. Also with tier one, what's great is I don't think the skill-based matchmaking is so strong on skill one, uh, on tier one because there are less players playing tier one. So it just basically groups you to what, whatever you got, right? And so I, I think there, there's more of a disparity between different players of different skill levels. And it's fun because it's not like the game doesn't try to serve you this algorithm to give you this high, right? To hit, to to inject dopamine into your brain. Like, oh man, I'm doing really good, man. I crush it this game. And then just shits on you for like 10 games later, right? And, and puts you against fucking FaZe Clan. You know what I mean? So with that being said, I, I do think the skill-based matchmaking is, is much less noticeable in tier one. And I think it's just because it's just pulling everybody who just wants to play that playlist. Also... Movement speed is slower. It can still be fast at times, but you really have to rely on your senses, like your eyesight and sound. Thank God they have added uh, louder footsteps in this update. So really relying on footsteps and relying on where you're seeing your, your uh, teammates fight and where they're going down at and relying on like visual, like how many bodies are out you know, in the hallway or in the courtyard. Relying on your senses is much more important in tier one. So I think that's why it slows down the gameplay a little bit more. But I love it. I love that it's slower. It's more methodical. You have to really think about what you're doing and how you want to achieve an objective. And the thing is, too, is if you want to attack an objective, you have to think about that as well. Because you can have two guys that can literally hold down one objective from a whole team. And while you can do that in the normal playlist, I think it's so much harder to do in tier one. So you have to really think about how you attack because two guys can take out a whole team. You know, it's brutal. Bop, bop, bop. You know, three shots here. Another guy's taking out two other guys. It's really hard to push that objective. So really think about how you want to approach it. Throw flashbangs in there, right? Stun grenades, then push in. Maybe have a riot shield go in first. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of that ready or not old SWAT style gameplay. Maybe some, a little bit of zero hour gameplay. If you guys... Um, ever played zero hour. So I really, really love that about the tier one playlist. And so basically to have all the polish that Call of Duty has, to have the graphical fidelity, to have the very fluid movement speeds, uh, to have the gun mechanics, and, and honestly, top notch, absolutely top notch animations as far as reload animations go that are so realistic. And everything good about Call of Duty, everything fluid about it, everything that millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of very talented uh, devs can do to a game, to be able to have that in like a more tactical setting, right, is so cool. It's almost like playing, you know, like a really, really high budget version of Ready or Not, depending on what game mode you're playing, uh, or some of the old SWAT games. So that is why I love Tier 1. That's why I think this is the best game mode in Call of Duty, and I think a lot of people are sleeping on it. So that's that's my thoughts in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. Consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of our YouTube community and our extended family. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Let's go! Okay, Stand by. Threats in the perimeter. The enemy has the lead. Enemy targets at the hard point. Enemy UAV active. I've got your back. Target area up. We've taken the lead. We've got the enemy. Take cover. Friendly bomb drone. That was for my friend. Throwing drill charge. Amateur shit. Threats in the perimeter. Enemy here. Enemy targets at the hard point. <laughs> Locating the next hard point. Get ready. Hard point compromised. Secure the area. the target area. We're gaining ground. Don't let up. Hard point compromised. Secure the area. Flash out! Enemy targets at the hard point. Stop, it's a cruise missile.
Accomplished. Lack of job.